Hi, I'm Kyle, and this is my first devlog. I'm from Fortaleza, and I've been a system developer for some 10 years. I always liked video games. I grew up playing Super Mario World at the video store from the neighborhood, and then A Link to the Past and Pokemon Silver running in emulators at a friend's house. Since then, things have improved, but I'm still more on the side of Nintendo than Sony. During this pandemic, I came up to my hometown city after a few years away, and in the total despair of isolation, which also coincided with 30 days of vacation, I started playing Hollow Knight. And like half of the world, that 2D game with graphics and gameplay consumed a few weeks of my time and still caused me tendinitis. But I soon found out on YouTube that it had been created by a studio of two people and that they had done it all by themselves. And I want to do something like that too. So during the next few months of my pandemic, I dedicated myself to learn what I could do with the knowledge that I had and what I could not. Soon it appeared to me that Unity was a good start. An engine for game development that is free, using C-sharp language, which although not my specialty, I've had contact with before and is minimally Java-like, so I don't need to learn something completely new. But what the hell is a mono behavior? And how do I organize this stated machine? And how do I deal with the style map and parallax effect? And every question took two weeks of research and work to implement something that did come up close to the level of what I had in my head. Soon the holidays were over and I had to split myself with work and I understood that the scope of the project I had in mind was much bigger than I had thought. So my project of a side-scrolling Souls-like 2D in black and white with lizards returned to the drawer and taking advice from several other devlogs that I started to watch, I realized that making a small project with a well-defined scope would let me learn, test my skills, and keep me motivated to continue in my spare time. So I started participating in some game jams, which are small themed competitions that last a few days or weeks, where the crowd sends the works and then receives feedback from those who participate. None of them I went very well, but I learned about a lot of things that I hadn't seen before. How to export a project in Unity, handle scenes, add audio, and work with different screen resolutions. You can see my submissions in the description, but don't expect to find anything very good. If I only managed to finish, it was already a victory. But keeping running after the clock to finish something ends up sucking a lot of my energy. So I started working on small projects on my own, but I came back to the barrier of being able to feel motivated to deliver something and finalize the ideas. So I've gotten the reason for doing this devlog. The objective is to create something that gives me responsibility to complete an idea because if people are falling, it will be easy to commit to finishing. And I also create an audience that wants to play what I do. After all, making a game just for me doesn't look very rewarding. And another reason is that making a game is hard, and it's hard to learn about it. And helping other people learn has always been something that I enjoy to do in my work. And I think that might be something that I might like to do as part of this hobby. Well, you must be wondering what this project is. One of the most fun casual games I like and that I always come back when on vacations is Hearthstone. I've always been interested in card games since the days of Yu-Gi-Oh! But Hearthstone model with short battles, basic and simple rules that require a certain level of strategy made me spend a few many hours having fun on the phone and even playing multiplayer online, something that no other franchise has motivated me to do. I decided to combine this with another style that I like a lot, monster collect game and battles for turns, like those of Pokemon. Also offer the same type of challenge that seems simple at first, but that can get pretty deep. So my idea is to create a collectible monster card game with types advantages and disadvantages, with battle states, each with a specific passive skill that can be activated and played on that field. At first, I decided to use Pokemon images to speed up the implementation, but gradually I will create my own monsters. So these are the goals that I have for this project, to help to guide my decisions. First, do a project with a small scope, with about 6 months. 
It might seem like a lot, but it's a lot less than what I had in my mind before. And it's way more than the last ones I worked on. And in second, create an audience for the game. With that in mind, one of the first decisions that I had to take was if I would make an online or local experience. I'm not a big fan of online games, but Hearthstone is one of the few exceptions, so I can't stand the appeal. It's really fun to play against someone online, and a battle starts in a few seconds, and the fact that your opponents may have strategies completely unexpected adds a lot. I researched some frameworks for distributed multiplayer, but I found out that Unity was provided an official solution through the Unity game system, which was in beta but intended to be free for a certain number of connected users. The benefit of using an official solution is that it will be supported for many years and it will integrate well with the architecture of Unity. And if it's embraced by the community, a lot of material must be generated with examples and it becomes easy to ask questions and solve problems. Then I download the project and try to follow the tutorials present in the documentation with the help of some videos on YouTube. Although the tutorials are clear, it's still in beta. Some APIs had changed and I spent some time dealing with problems that had no documentation anywhere. But I heard that they launched the final version recently, so if you are looking for something similar, I recommend checking it out. After that, I managed to understand the concept and how it could work in my game. Using the Unity Game System to play model, you can create a lob where people can enter. Once in the lobby, you can directly connect with one person, and then you need to create a connection between team instances, where one of them works as a server and the others as clients. From clients, you can create objects whose states are automatically shared with everyone who is connected. In your code, you have to identify if you are the server or a client, and every time you need to make a change to an object, you should ask for it to be done on the server through some annotations, which are made in the code, so the changes are shared with everyone. This is a super simplification, Unity offers two ways to do this, one which failures are ignored and another that guarantees delivery and order of changes. After thinking for a while, actually days, I realized that I could abstract this with a command pattern, and that would work perfectly with the card game. The command pattern is a design pattern, which is a well-known form to solve a problem. If you are starting with software development, I recommend giving it a read. The command pattern attempts to separate the request from an object to do something of the current execution, allowing you to queue requests that can be executed afterward, and if create a history that can be undone or redone. That way I could keep all battery states, decks and cards in the server and the clients would only need to send a command to run. The sub would receive then and, through the framework, update clients with any changes. But that said, the multiplayer codes is quite complicated. There are too many failure scenarios to be treated and it would greatly increase the complexity and that would require me to learn something that I never worked deeper. C. Tests and proof of concepts is easy, but when you go to use them in real cases, the complexity becomes greater. And speaking the truth, I don't know if people will be interested in my game. It can be that they can even find someone to play with. Putting away all the efforts to develop this feature. Returning to the objective of making a game with reduced scope, here was a place where I could cut it out. I decided to prioritize creating a solo experience with increasing challenge. Pokemon has been doing this for years, and it is a franchise of success. If I create interesting enemies, I must manage to keep the play interested for a long time, and if people are interested, multiplay can be added later. I also decided to use the common pattern to organize architecture, because it would be a good way of structuring and could easily adapt to the multiplay later. And then, what do you think? Leave a comment there about your gaming preference. Do you also prefer to play alone or do you prefer multiplayer? I'm providing the link to the YouTube tutorials about multiplayer. If you're interested, give it a look, feel free. You can send comments if you have any questions. Next devlog, I should talk a little bit more about the game dynamics, details, and show a bit of the visuals part and how adding a little feedback completely changes the feeling of who's playing. If you like it, subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, we'll come back in a few weeks. 
If you want to see what I'm doing closely, you can follow me on tweet. It's Kael Game Dev. I post there almost every day. Folks, that's it. I hug you for you all.